I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who have been recommending this movie for months at this point. Philadelphia. I am finally watching Philadelphia. Thanks for your patience and thanks for hanging with me till this point. Although Philadelphia pretty much lose every time I put it on a poll, from the comments I got the feeling that this movie was a significantly good movie and also an important movie with a really good message. So I'm very happy. I've been watching a lot of Tom Hanks movies and this one always came up i believe he won was it an oscar for this one some people have said it is tom hanks best role which i'm excited to encounter that i put a poll on my channel recently about the next big movie star that i can explore their catalog and denzel won by a long shot which this is just a beautiful transition from this to those movies so denzel is in this i've always loved denzel i've seen a few of his movies but just him in pop culture and just black culture in general is like denzel is just the goat you know so thank Thank you all for tuning on to the video please if you like the video today go ahead and like the video it helps youtube and the algorithm it helps them know that this video is good so they share it to more people so hit that like button i also want to hear your thoughts about the movies i love diving into the comment section and seeing what people thought about the movie or the video i made about it one of my favorite things so far about the comments is every time i see one of these big movies you guys always share your first experience whether you being a kid or being a young adult seeing it with your parents or your friends and the feeling and the mood in the theater i love hearing all that so anything you want to share about this movie or the reaction please go ahead and share it no matter how minute i love to see them one last time thanks to all of you and to my patreons respect thank you so much for making this possible let's check out philadelphia okay oh this movie is old old i can feel the 90s vibe the song is fire. <laughs> Tom Hanks, baby. Denzel. I'm so excited to check out Denzel's movies. I'm definitely going to save this song. Sometimes I wish I was an adult in the 80s. Sorry, in the 90s. I don't know. There's just something about that time. Obviously, not the negative stuff, but you know what I mean. I really love this song, like a Philadelphia anthem or something. Feels like it's really representing the city. And I feel like these are actual people, not just extras. I feel like it really captures the soul of Philly. I don't know much about this story, but people tend to tell me it's a very hard hitting one. Each time it was tested, and the results oh my God. limestone. It's messy, but innocuous. He's so handsome, yo. Innocuous. Thank you. <laughs> Denzel. Your Honor. Is that cocaine? Imagine how the children in this neighborhood are being made to feel. Casting an ominous shadow over their lives, filling them with dread, even as they are surrounded by this toxic dust. Builds neighborhoods. It doesn't destroy them. Granting a lawyer against this construction site will throw 753 Philadelphians out of work. But I don't believe you've proven irreparable harm. Not yet, Your Honor. <laughs> Without Hello, Irene. Look at them so young. <laughs> Funny. Hold on. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. I'm guessing there are two people of opposing views. Blood. Is he sick or is he just donating blood? Your blood work came back this morning. I'm gonna come back in a few minutes and talk to you about it. I'll be right here. Mm. Gonna have to start looking for veins in your feet, sweetheart. Mm, A's walk. <sighs> Does he have AIDS? Hey, and a terrific job in the Kendall situation. Stop nuts, Mr. Beckett. Thanks, Kenneth Robert. Hi, um, good in he's a lawyer. Just the paralegal extraordinaire I was hoping to see. Alrighty now, this is a settlement agreement. The red line copy's on your desk. Oh, hi, darling. What a wonderful uh, surprise. How are you? That's mama. Hi. My blood work is excellent. It says my T cells are steady. Honey, how about your platelets? Oh, even my platelets look good. Great. Good. He's Mom, not more sick. More importantly, how are you? Mom. Aww. I'm fine. How's <laughs> dad? Dad is fine. She's happy. If Sanders Systems wins, an energetic young company is destroyed. <laughs> Rodney Bailey couldn't find his way around copyright law with a map. <laughs> <laughs> Roasting his ass. Wheeler, Hellerman, Tetlow, and Brown. Outstanding. 
<laughs> and more specifically, senior associate Andrew Beckett. Interesting. <laughs> Feels like he's on top of the world right now. Are they prepping us for a crash? Walter, thanks. I'm overwhelmed. What's that in your forehead, pal? What, where? That right there in your forehead. Oh, oh, I got whacked in the head with a racket ball. Ooh, excuse me. Uh-oh. Is he showing symptoms? I sincerely appreciate your faith in my abilities. Mm. Faith, Andy, is a belief in something for which we have no evidence. It does not apply to this situation. Mm. Thank yeah, I have this no feeling in my chest that a lot of good things are happening to him right now, but there might be a crash coming nine days later. Mm. You're really focusing on that? There's another one. Okay, now you're gonna wanna apply <laughs> makeup foundation as you don't want it to look like you threw it on with a spoon. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, <laughs> here, you try this. A little too orange for me. Well, okay. It is very orange. Okay. Think of it as the I just got back from Aruba look. I've called in sick for four days, and now they're gonna think that I was taking a cruise. I think he is aware that he is sick, right? Is that why they're doing the makeup, trying to like hide his symptoms a little bit? Oh, ow. What? Andy, excuse me. What? Mm mm. Just like my cousin Frida. Dang. You okay, Andy? Oh God. I need to go to the hospital. Oh man, we're starting off. Is that freaking Antonio Banderas? <laughs> that was awesome. Hello, hello. No. Oh. It's all right. Thank you for driving. <laughs> one more, one more. Take it easy, took blood, a specimen or something. Blood, yes, a specimen. I'm, mm. I'm empty. Did you, did you find somebody to take your blood? Oh, Is that his Peter, partner? I, I came that close to not making it into the bathroom. So what? Wow. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Uh -huh. We're waiting. Meanwhile, I want to prep you for a colonoscopy. We want to take a look inside. Oh God. Well, you need to do this. Who are you? Oh, who are you, uh, doctor? This is my partner. Right. He keeps the records of all my hospital visits. It's nothing personal. But if the KS is causing the diarrhea, we've got to know about that right away. Yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah, but it could be parasites, an infection. I mean, reaction right. to the... It could be something else. We've got to go forward. No, 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 listen to me. Painful procedure. Until we cancel out everything else. Do you know what I mean? I'm trying to help your partner here, okay? Okay. Hey, you're not a member of his immediate family. I'm not? I could have you removed from the ER. Really? Look, look, look. He's... he's Doctor, upset. relax. He's sorry. Might hear from Dr. Gilman, and we can start from there, okay? Everybody right. happy? All right? Okay. All right. I want to say I love how the um, I love how the scenes are shot. A lot of the scenes are like right in their face. Um, I don't know. I just feel like that helps to just put us into their emotions and like what they're feeling. Uh, you can tell his partner is irritated with the doctor. You can tell Tom is scared, but also just coming off as a nice guy and an understanding guy and uh, as for the doctor yes he's a doctor but i don't know if he has any biases against them i don't know but i know he's trying to do his job as well but yeah I'm oh good good is there a phone <laughs> around somewhere? i love seeing them so young all these actors him denzel banderas we have a minor catastrophe in the making here. It's about that Highline uh -oh. complaint. Jamie is going absolutely ballistic. Uh-oh. Trouble in paradise. No, 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 no. I, I brought it into the office last night. I was there till 3 a.m. There should be a, a copy uh -oh. with corrections on my desk. L1. Trouble in life. Trouble with your health. Trouble at work. It's not here, Andy. Not there. I'm, I'm on my way. No, you need to stay in a hospital, man. Every problem has a solution. Boys! Oh, it's coming! One month later. Oh, man. He just had a baby. <laughs> he said, I'm trying. Really? Man, she just had a baby. Figure out that shit yourself. <laughs> 
are so real. <laughs> he just handing out his business card and cigars. Man, that is that was beautiful, but that was also sad in a way because Andrew's life is becoming significantly worse with his health and work. And on the other hand, him, his life is getting like so much better on the news. He's popular. Just had a baby. Man. <laughs> My man is passed out. <laughs> That feeling of seeing your baby for the first right, time. Look, I want you to explain this to me like I'm a six-year-old, okay? This huge hole mm. that is clearly marked and blocked off, right? Yes. You decide you must cross the street at this spot, no other, fall into the hole. Now you want to sue the city for negligence, right? Yes. Do I have a case? <laughs> no. Yeah, of course you got a case. <laughs> Great. Tell you all about our fee arrangement. Of course, you know we take no cash unless we get cash justice uh -huh. for you. You take good care of Mr. Finley. I will. What Mr. a good businessman. Hey, very good. Thank you very, very much. Nice. Mr. Beckett, come in. Oh, he looks so different. It's good to see you again, counselor. Innocuous. Yeah. <laughs> How are you? What happened to your face? Innocuous. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Wow. Can I sit down? Yeah. Wow. Wow. <sighs> Oh man, is this movie going to like address? Oof, yeah. I have AIDS. He pulled his hand away real quick, took a few steps back. Um, damn. Yeah. Obviously, back then, there's a lot of misinformation about Look at this. AIDS and the whole condition, you have right? A baby. Yeah, yeah, little baby girl. Wow. Oh, <laughs> it's a girl, huh? Congratulations. Kids are great. I'm really excited about it. Listen, I, uh... I've, uh, I've been fired. Mm. Plan on bringing a wrongful termination suit against Charles Wheeler and his partner. You uh... want to sue Wyant, Wheeler, Hellerman, Tetlow, and Brown? Correct. I'm seeking representation. I love where this is going. I misplaced an important complaint. That's their story. Want to hear mine? Mm. It's obvious. How many lawyers you go to before you call me? Nine. And they all rejected him. I worked on the complaint in my office. I left a copy of it on my desk. The complaint vanished. Mysteriously gone from my computer. Located at the last minute, and we got it to court on time. But the next day, I was summoned to a meeting with the managing partners. They were waiting they for me. They set him up, huh? Thanks for coming in. Of I don't course, like this. I'd just like to say, everyone in this room, your friend. Bullshit. I know that, Charles. The complaint hmm. was found and, and no damage was done. This time? What about next time? It won't be a next time. I Did they it. set him up to get rid of him? Some kind of stupor, uh, fogginess. Some people think you have an attitude problem, Beckett. Really? This is annoying me already. I do. Excuse me. Am I being fired? Yeah. Let me put it this way, Andy. Your place in the future of this firm is no longer secure when your prospects are limited. Now, Basically, because he has a. I want to rush you out. We've got a committee meeting. Wait, excuse me, Charles. This is preposterous. It, it, it doesn't make any sense. Right. Oh, you're right, Beckett. You don't have an attitude problem. If you had lost confidence in me, why'd you give me the Highline suit? Andy, you need right. to prove the entire case, for Christ's sakes. Uh huh. So you were concealing your illness? Mm hmm. Yeah. That's correct. Didn't you have an obligation to tell your employer you had this dreaded, deadly, infectious disease? That's not the point. From the day you right. hired me to the day I was fired, I served my clients consistently. Fire you for having AIDS, so in spite of your brilliance, they'd make you look incompetent, thus the mysterious lost file. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Yes. I was sabotaged. It's a setup. Clear as day. I don't buy it, counselor. Damn. That's very disappointing. I don't see a case. That is very appalling. I'm actually disappointed in him saying that. I mean, at this stage, I mean, it's clear that over the course of the movie, he's going to learn to empathize and see 
Andrew Spore interview better, but the reason why that's disappointed to me is because the last guy who came with a bogus claim of him wanting to sue the city for falling into a ditch, there was no case there at all. He told the guy, we'll take care of you and all this. And something like this, which is clearly a setup and a sabotage, he says he sees no case. So that's just a bit disappointing. But don't come at me with pitchforks. Like I said, at this portion of the movie is disappointing, but it's clear that Denzel's character is going to get better and understand the situation better and just be kinder to him in general. I have a case. You do have a case. You don't want it for personal reasons. Thank you, that's correct. I don't. Damn. Well, thank you for your time, counselor. I wonder what is going it's to change his mind. I'm sorry about what happened to you. It's a bitch, you know? I mean, yeah. I feel like this movie is going to take my mind into different places and I'm going to just say what comes to my mind and if you don't like that, you can skip the video. Um... We're in 2024 and like there's still like heavy like homophobia towards people who are not straight and obviously I know that the HIV AIDS virus and epidemic was really like something that people just used to fuel their homophobia and I mean not everybody that have viewpoint like that are evil I mean it's just it's just something you just grew up with in this society. That's like the bare minimum. Like that's just like the norm. Except you obviously improve yourself and open your horizons and see people for people. Then you can move past those biases you have against these people. So we're in 2024 right now. And I bet in the 80s and 90s, it was significantly worse. You know, how people with AIDS are like dehumanized and looked down on. But like I said, I feel like they are giving him this attribute right now but over the movie he's going to like ease into how he should be and how he should relate to you know a person who has aids oh man that must feel so dehumanizing man i love how the camera focuses on their faces finding out all kinds of new things about this disease every day i go home i pick up my little baby girl and i find out six months mm. from now on the news or something whoops made a mistake yeah you can't carry it on your your shirt or your clothes or... we're gonna draw blood why are we gonna do that joe, little joe. <laughs> to test you out <laughs> thanks <Doc. laughs> i don't need an AIDS test but thanks anyway thanks for the information really Right. And this just makes me feel like, I mean, even people that are kind hearted and people who are good, it's like when there's misinformation there, you get scared because I understand him. He has a family. He has a newborn baby. He don't want any harm to come to them. And the misinformation he has obviously will make him do things like this. You know, damn, it's so it's so freaking sad. It's so freaking sad. And I and trust me, I understand that this story is a good representation of the time it happened and not everyone was aware of the virus the way we are now so anytime i'm saying this things or i'm being critical i'm not trying to be judgy i'm just saying what is coming to mind i'm just trying to let you all know what i'm thinking you have a problem with gays joe no, not especially how many gays do you know <laughs> how many you know <laughs> lots karen berman my Aunt Teresa, Tommy, mm. who lives in Rochester, Eddie Myers from The Office. Teresa is gay? That beautiful, <laughs> sensuous, voluptuous woman is a lesbian? Duh. Since when? <laughs> Probably since she was born. Right. I'm prejudiced. I don't like homosexuals. Dad, you got me. All right. I mean, the way these guys do that thing. Don't they get confused? No, I don't know. Is that yours? Is that mine? <laughs> wow, you know, <laughs> that I is tough. Be with anybody who's stronger than me. You can call me old fashioned, you can call me conservative. <laughs> Just call me a man. Really disgusting that whole idea is anyway. There you go, baby. Stay away from your Aunt Teresa, too. Oh, Joe, don't say that to her. Mm, think about it. those guys. That's how it's passed down, though. At the same time, you know, I can't stand that shit. 
Hey, I'm being totally honest with you, okay? Oh, yeah, you are. All right. Damn, that is sad, bro. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Happy New Year. <laughs> You're the, uh, the TV, TV guy. guy. I feel like every scene of this movie, I'm going to have something to say. Um, I love that the movie shows him being such a nice, kind man. He holds the door open for people. He greets people. He's just an overall, like, charismatic, nice guy. But there's that side of him that has his prejudice towards gay people or homosexuals, right? And I feel that goes to shows just that um i don't know that bigotry is something that people just learn from like the overall society i mean look at the way he looked at his daughter and be like i don't want you hanging around your aunt you know because that girl is gonna grow up and if he continues this attitude that girl is gonna grow up hating or feeling that type of way towards people of that community so again all these is stuff that is taught you know a lot of it comes from fear but i'm sure there are a lot of people spreading the misinformation and um i think we've talked about it in a couple of other movies where people are more susceptible to misinformation when they are scared and when they're ignorant about the actual facts so i love that the movie shows him as an overall stand-up guy but when it comes to that side he's not informed enough to know that these people are people like these people are just like you like when he was talking about how he's he can't stand two men going at it it's like bruh the way you see your wife attractive and innately you know you're attracted to this woman you know you're attracted to this person why would you think is any different for a man to another man or a woman to another woman like the same way you're passionate about your lover is how they're passionate about their lover it's just in your mind because it's the same man on man that it feels weird to you again because of the misinformation. But at this point, I feel like I'm preaching to the choir. If you're watching this movie, then I'm sure your mind is at a good place when it comes to um, topics like this. I'm so interested in seeing how he transitioned from this mind state to a more compassionate mind state. What the fuck are you looking at? Section on HIV related discrimination. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Wow, he's learning the laws himself. <laughs> Fucking go away, bro. Let him be. Wouldn't you be more comfortable in a research room? Wouldn't you be more comfortable shutting the up and back in a way <coughs> no well, that's right make you more comfortable yeah yeah now I'm back off back in how you doing counselor mm huh whatever sir And there's something I love about the previous scene. Remember how the library guard walked by Denzel and looked at him the whole time? It just had me thinking, it's like, it's funny, not funny, I understand, but like, it's so weird to me that like, someone from a minority group can sympathize with someone in another minority group based on their own biases. It's like, yo. <laughs> You should feel how I feel because Denzel knows what racism feels like. He knows what discrimination feels like from white people who are bigoted. And I feel like in this movie, I'll love to see him starting to put two and two together. That him, hey, man, I didn't like the way that man looked at me and the way that man talked down at me because I'm from a minority group. I shouldn't do the same to someone else who I consider lesser because of their affliction or their sexual orientation, you feel me? And I, I love that they put that there right before this encounter. Did you find a lawyer? Mm. Uh, I'm a lawyer. Hey, how's your baby? You wanna stand for himself? She's wonderful, great. Larice. Larice. Named her after my sister. Turn back and talk to that man, Denzel. 
Look, I'm, uh, I did find out you had the AIDS. One of the partners noticed a lesion on my forehead. Hmm. He looked at him weird in the beginning. Um, how do you go from a lawyer spotting a lesion, which could be I love that. To, uh, Sit down with him. The partners deducing that you have AIDS and terminating you on the basis of that conclusion. That's a good point. Good point indeed. This is was common knowledge around the office that relations were caused by AIDS. But they didn't Interesting. Fire. No. They did not fire her. See. So you got a you got a relevant precedent? Mm-hmm. I love this so much because ah oh man. Let me just keep watching because I'm going to have so much to say about this movie. I love this so much because, like, if you're watching this, you know that feeling of when the human side of your heart start going against what society have made you believe since you were little. Because I remember when I was little and we used to make fun of gay people and gay jokes as a kid because like just growing up we just assumed all that was cool and funny like demeaning jokes against gay people but then you grow up and you get older and you experience life and you experience people from that community and your heart starts clashing with that sense that you have grown up with that it's okay to make fun of these people or not see them as human and i love this thing because it's like he was trying to walk away and after experiencing everything that's happened there you could tell that like those two sides were like clashing it's like i want to help this man i know this man has some injustice done to him but i also know this man's a human being and on the other side your preconceived thoughts about gay people in general and people with aids it's like those are clashing and it's always beautiful when people like overcome those biases and those those things they've learned and just see someone as a human being in front of them prohibits discrimination against otherwise qualified handicapped persons who are able to perform the duties required by their employment. Yes, sir. Although the ruling did not address the specific issue of HIV and AIDS physical limitations it imposes, but because the prejudice surrounding AIDS exacts a social death which precedes... Social death, that's important. Which precedes the actual physical one. Hmm. Yeah, man, being caught off, being ostracized. This is the essence of discrimination. Formulating opinions about others not based on their individual merits, but rather on their membership in a group with assumed characteristics. That's a bar. Six weeks. And I really love the passage of time. Dr. J is in this? That is crazy. And no way Dr. J is in this. <laughs> Summons for you, motherfucker. <laughs> what I love about this scene is me just watching as a viewer. These two men are like juggernauts in their respective field. <laughs> like Dr. J is Dr. J and Denzel is Denzel, you know? And just seeing them interact like this in a movie, it's... I don't know, there's something that was just cool about that. You've been summoned, mother... What's up? <laughs> they want to know everything about his personal life. Does he frequent those pathetic bars on chest and right? Wow. What other homosexual facilities does he go to? Absolutely. And the f***ed up part about it is... So many people still carry these beliefs till today. Strongly as well. Yo. Andy from AIDS into our office into our men's room. We ought to be suing him, Bob. Where is your compassion, John? Bob, we gave him Highline. He said nothing. Andrew Beckett proposes to haul me into court, to sling accusations at me, to call the me The audacity, bigot. right? You are a f***ing bigot. What do you mean? <laughs> you didn't know he was sick, did you, Bob? Holy shit, did you, Bob? You all have fucked. No, not, not really. Is this based on a true story? Everybody, this is the house that I grew up in. Mm. Bonito, there, my handprints from when I was Aww. a cute little oh, boy. Pretty tough life around this poverty so many years, huh? <laughs> no, no, those can be some pretty mean streets. <laughs> hey, there's my sister Jill, everybody. Oh. <laughs> Where's that? <laughs> 
<laughs> He's down trying to get the snowblower fixed. I love this. Today's a good day. I gotta say hello to Ronnie sisters. Mm. There's some concern in the mother's face. No, this is before he got sick, right? Sure, it's okay with everybody. Oh wow, he's prepping Andy, them. You want me to take her? She's fine. I think it's great that you're asking, Andy, but uh, this is really your call. All right, thank mm. you, brother. You're my good brother. That's all that mm. matters, okay? You and Miguel, with with so much courage, mm. I don't believe there's anything that that anyone could say that would make us feel anything but incredibly proud of you. I love the support system, yeah. man. I didn't raise my kids to sit in the back of the bus. Mm. Get in there and you fight for your rights. Okay? Oh, God. Gee, I love you guys. This is so good. <laughs> Imagine going through this and having a shitty family. Which is unfortunately the reality for so many people. Ladies and Ostracized and all that. Forget everything you've seen on television and in the movie. You're going to be presented simple fact. Mm. Andrew Beckett was fired. Mm -hmm. It's up to you to sift through layer upon layer of truth until you determine for yourselves which version sounds the most true. There's certain and keep points that, that I bias out. Point number one, Andrew Beckett was, is a brilliant lawyer. Mm. Point number two, Andrew Beckett, afflicted with a debilitating disease, made the understandable be personal the legal choice to keep the fact of his illness to himself. Point number three, his Which is his right. Discovered his illness. And ladies and gentlemen, the illness I'm referring to is AIDS. Point number four, they panicked. And did some bullshit. And in their panic, they did what most of us would like to do with AIDS, which is just get it as far away from the rest of us as possible. And I love it too, because like Denzel has some insight into this because he was one of those people that wanted to just exclude him and take him away from him i mean remember their first meeting in his office he just wanted dude out of there you know went to see the doctor immediately complaining and all that so he has some insight and he has made that growth he has like changed he has improved he has learned to see him as a human being and like as a victim of his circumstances and his sickness so i love that he's coming in here with that insight because he probably knows how the jury are feeling because they're just people you know living in the midst of all the misinformation and the discrimination against you know people in that community now the behavior of andrew beckett's employees may seem reasonable to you it does to me after all AIDS is a deadly incurable disease but no matter mm -hmm. how you come to judge fact of the matter is when they fired andrew beckett because he had aids they broke the law Period. He's laying it down. Fact. Okay. Andrew Beckett's performance varied from competent, good, to mediocre, flagrantly incompetent. Where's the proof of that? The partners at Wyant Wheel did not know that Andrew Beckett had AIDS when they fired him. Bullshit. Fact. Andrew Beckett is dying. What does that have to do with anything? He is angry because his lifestyle, reckless behavior, has cut short his life. And wow. in his rage, he is lashing out. And he wants someone to pay. All the mental gymnastics. Trash. Were you pleased with his work? We were satisfied with the outcome of the litigation. Satisfied? Yeah, because you guys are going to have to prove what you're saying about his incompetence. Because, like, up until you guys found out he had A's, you guys were giving him promotions. You guys were giving him... Yeah, you wouldn't do that to someone who's just satisfied. So, all that is bullshit. And I love to see how they break them down in this court case. You gave sworn testimony in a deposition, is that correct? That's correct. Mm -hmm. 
said that you were impressed and delighted with the quality <laughs> of Andrew Beckett's work. Do you recall saying that? Yeah. Come on, speak up. I was delighted with certain aspects of Andy's efforts. But in general, I found the work to be merely satisfactory. Uh -huh. That's some bullshit right there. He said, mm-hmm. Do you agree that a bologna sandwich is a satisfactory meal? Whereas uh, caviar <laughs> and champagne, baked Alaska, that might be considered a delightful meal. We object. No, they <laughs> well, are they're not very relevant. relevant. Your Honor, five months ago, this witness characterized Andrew Beckett as caviar. Now he's calling him a bologna sandwich. I think that the jury is entitled to know what powerful force has caused him to change his mind. <laughs> Got your ass. He hasn't changed his mind. He's amplified his answer. Objection sustained. Oh, this judge is on some bullshit, too. All right, Mr. Laird, explain this to me like I'm a four-year-old, okay? I love that he always Andrew says that. Beckett win your lawsuit for you? Yes, we won. Oh, congratulations. That must have been a very satisfactory experience. <laughs> Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Speak your truth, people. Homophobic big people don't know how stupid they sound sometimes. Like, yeah. It's like you can't get over your ignorance wherever it comes from. Be it like religious or just social. It's like, dog. The harm some of y'all do to people's lives because of your bigotry is is wild. And you think you're doing something good and standing up for your beliefs? Yeah, if it's your beliefs, let it be your beliefs. Don't push it on other people. This man is not here harming anybody. He's just living his life and going through some unfortunate circumstance. It's like Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. <sighs> <laughs> Period. As a bar. You're not getting a little light in the sneakers, are you, pal? <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I am Phil Coco. I'm, uh, I'm changing. And I'm looking for a hunk, not just any hunk. I mean a man, a real man like you. <laughs> That's not funny. Let me tell you something. These people make me sick, Philco. But the law's been broken. You remember the law, don't you? Mm-hmm. And at that time, did Walter Kenton know the KS lesions on your face and arms were caused by AIDS? Definitely. I told all the partners. How did you contract the AIDS virus? Through a transfusion. So in other words, in your case, there was no behavior on your part which caused you to be infected. It was something that you were unable to avoid. Isn't that correct? That's the f shit right here. They're they're demonizing the act of just loving another man or your own personal actions. What does that have to do with anything? Yeah. Again, the discrimination, right? Like, you just see this person as doing something that is inherently evil. Like loving another person. Like loving another man. So, that justifies you to be a dickhead to them, essentially. Or for them not to get proper treatment because they are doing something wrong again none of the none of their points start stand up to any like proper scrutiny honestly it was something that you were unable to avoid isn't that correct mm. i guess but i don't consider myself any different from anyone else with this disease exactly i'm not guilty i'm not innocent i'm just trying to survive thank Period. you Ms. Mm. may step down Ms. benedict I don't like the judge. Yeah, I'm noticing the marks on I don't know, man. Were there? Still, I felt something was wrong. I can't believe that they're trying to pretend that they didn't notice anything. Have you ever felt discriminated against at Wyatt Wheeler? <laughs> oh, yes. She's a woman. Of course. Well, yes. In what way? Of course. Well, Mr. Wheeler had a problem with my earrings. Apparently, Mr. Wheeler felt that they were too ethnic. She told me that he said that he would like it if I wore something a little less garish, a little smaller, and more American. America. Fuck you. What'd you say? I said my earrings are American. They're African-American. 
Yes, sir. Could it be that these instances of discrimination are in fact misunderstandings that have been blown completely out of proportion? <laughs> Bullshit. I think counsel tends to oversimplify the issue somewhat. Well, thank mm. you, Ms. Burton. I'll take that note under consideration. I can see why they believe the things they believe because I feel like if you're a person who's not very critical or use a lot of critical thinking, you can be easily be swayed by some of these beliefs or like if you don't think very critically like this misinformation can easily like sway you again put all these things under scrutiny it's like one of the questions i always like asking myself when i'm in a situation where i don't understand is why and be honest with myself it's like why do i feel this way towards this person is it the way they look is it their demeanor is it how they talk to me like why do i feel this way towards this and the more i ask myself why and be honest with my answers like and do a lot of introspection like you put whatever bias you have or whatever feeling you have towards someone under scrutiny and then you can find out oh frank i'm on some bullshit like the reason why i'm acting like this towards this person or saying this towards this person or thinking this towards this person is on me it is my issue now how do i work through that issue should i talk to a mentor or someone who knows better than me should i, should I go do some reading should i watch a video essay about a topic from an expert um with facts to help me like reach a proper conclusion or how to better how to better relate to this person or the thing i don't like about this person you know what i'm saying like be critical about some things i feel like that's a good way to like halt misinformation and the spread of it because me sitting down here right now like i still have some biases about things that i'm still learning how to go over but honestly if you just lead with kindness and if you just lead with this attitude of i don't know everything and i'm sure the more i learn about this i can genuinely improve my relationship with this thing or this person or this topic because yeah we don't know anything and like knowledge you don't have will always like make you susceptible to some bullshit, for lack of a better term Doing? All right, how are you? All right. Show me on TV. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's good school, Pam. Yeah. <laughs> that laugh. Second. This case, it's tremendously important. I just wanted to let you know, I think you're doing a fantastic job. Thank you. Listen, Joe. Mm. Yeah. Would you like to have a drink with me? Uh, no, I can't. I, you know, my wife is... I don't pick up people in drugstores every day. Hmm. What do you think I'm gay? Huh? Aren't you? What's the matter with oh, you? Do I look wow. gay to you? Do I look gay to you? <laughs> There's not a look to it, but Joe, yeah. Relax. No, what do you mean relax? You know how to kick your f little ass. Take it as a compliment. Jeez. Damn. You know, that is exactly the kind of bullshit that makes people hate you a little. <laughs> you want to try Damn. and kick my ass, Joe? Asshole. No, you're the asshole, buddy. Damn. May I? Certainly. <laughs> What a class move. Thank you. Was Andy a good boss? Yes. Hmm. He was very sweet. At any time of any problems that the senior partners had quality of Andrew's work prior to this missing file episode? No, no, I wasn't. Thank you. Did you have something to do with this uh, file being lost accidentally on purpose? Objection. I'll rephrase. Did you <laughs> accidentally have on purpose. This file being misplaced? Absolutely not. Are you a homosexual? What? Are you a homosexual? Answer the question. Are you a homo? It's a yes or no. You know a punk, queen, poster. Are you gay? Objection. Order. Where did this come from? Suddenly, counsel's attacking his own witness. Why did he do that? It has nothing to do with this case. Was he trying to enrage him? Everybody in this courtroom is thinking about sexual orientation. Right. Who does what to whom and how they do it? And they're looking at Andrew Beckett. So they're thinking about it. They're right. looking at Mr. Wheeler, Miss Conine, even you, Your Honor. Trust me, I know that they are looking at me and thinking about it. So let's just let's get it out of the closet. Huh. Because this case is not just about AIDS, is it? So let's talk about what this case is really all about. The general public's hatred, our loathing, our fear of homosexuals. Including his. That climate of hatred, fear translated to the firing of this particular homosexual my client 
right he's also speaking from his own point of view right because he still has some of that hate fear and discrimination for people who are gay right or like people who don't identify as straight like he still has that because like from the last incident he just had with the law student at the drugstore it's almost like he feels emasculated that someone would even think he is gay because he has this because he's taking this case <sighs> it's messed up how he's so ingrained in everything dog again he said that hate and that fear it's all over like a wildfire you know sometimes people like these honestly i again we all have our journeys right and as long as we're open and willing we're we're going to learn to like just love everyone and just see everyone as human but it's not surprising why it's such like a rampant rampant ideology like how people view people of other sexual orientation is disheartening for real very good in this courtroom mr <laughs> miller justice is blind to matters of race creed color religion and sexual orientation that's cap with all due respect at least we Lord, hope so we don't live in this courtroom though do we no mm. we don't that's a bar. However, as regards this witness, I'm going to sustain the defense's objection. She says, and I quote, that you were repulsed by her. You avoided her. Is that correct? That is so, correct. Deepest sympathy and compassion for people like Melissa contracted this terrible disease through no fault of their own. Fault. What do you mean, fault? Okay. Oh, he's treating him at home. We may have to flush it out again. Can we just skip the treatment for tonight? Mm -mm. Well, it's important. Not skipping this treatment. And it's my treatment, and I say skip it. You know something? Tell me something. Best saving your life. What's the matter with you tonight? Yeah. Yeah. He wants you to be okay. The least you can do is look at me and give me mm. a little of your time. You are worried. We don't have very much time left now, aren't you? No. No. Mm hmm. That's still valid, though. I'm going to start planning my memorial service. I'm going to start no. preparing for the inevitable. Don't do that Maybe to you him. Think about it. Mm. No, no, no. I've got a better idea. Because the sad part about this is you're being ostracized by your community, people around you, you got fired from work. All these people have their own thoughts and everything about you. But in the midst of this, it's like they all don't realize that you're literally dying. No compassion at all. Like, <laughs> you're literally fading away day by day. And you still have to deal with this, um, with everything going on. It's like, it's just a lose-lose for you at that point. And that's what I feel like some people don't understand sometimes. It's like, yes, you're holding on to your beliefs, whatever the fuck that is, like, that allows you or tells you it's okay to hate on these people. Or at least you're misinterpreting your belief and thinking you should hate on these people and just, you know, stand up for your belief, which is against them. But it's almost like people gloss over the fact that, like, you're literally killing this person. Because, I mean, that discrimination, ostracized by society, like, that can make people, like, end their own lives. You know, that can make people depressed. Like, that depression can lead into, you know, terrible things. So, yeah. Because it's like, this man is dealing with his treatment and he's literally dying, but... You guys are already here saying you're gay, you're homosexual, this, that, and the third. It's like, do you even consider the fact that this man only have maybe a couple of years or a couple of months to live? Hey. Costume party. Oh, okay. <laughs> They're both captains. Denzel, what is your costume? Alive tonight? Oh, I had a blood transfusion, and I feel great. Uh, so you like it? I'm a, I'm a lawsuit. <laughs> He's a lawsuit. What are you drinking? Uh wine. Uh can I have some? It's creative though. Do I know you? Mona Lisa. Ah. Uh lawsuit. Nice, have fun. 
<laughs> Denzel is so good, man. Mm. That was beautiful. Congratulations, Counselor. You survived what I assumed to be your first gay party intact. And you didn't <laughs> turn gay. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Andrew. When you brought up the way I am, the way most people are in this country, there's not a whole lot of discussion about homosexuality or about True. what do you call it, alternate lifestyles. As a kid, you're taught that queers are funny, queers are weird, queers dress up like their mother, that they're afraid to fight. That I'm glad he's self-aware of it. That all they want to do is to get into your pants. And that pretty much sums up the general thinking out there, if you want to know the truth about it. Oh, he knows. Thank you for sharing that with me. He knows. He lives it. Join the firm Wyant, Wheeler, Hellam, and Tetlin Brown. Miller, do you ever pray? Andrew, that is not the answer to the question. I let yes, them have I that pray. conversation. What do you pray for? I don't know. I pray that my baby is healthy. I pray that my wife made it through the delivery. I pray. Now, can we go through these questions? Number one, nah. can you describe the... I love where this is going because I feel like, yes, they're trying to make... A breakthrough in the court but i feel like maybe andrew wouldn't be fully committed or bring out his best until he is really really bonded with tom hanks character and seen him from a like human place um not just a client anymore and hopefully these conversations that they're starting to have here will help make that connection that i feel like will improve their overall performance in court their friendship with each other and hopefully like andrew's like mindset towards like aids in general or people in the gay community because i feel like you never really know till you know someone or you know a couple of people who live that life and their circumstance and i've been holding back this whole film of just talking about one of my best friends who is one of the most beautiful souls i know and was almost driven to taking their life because of discrimination about their sexual orientation and their sexual identity. Um, yeah. So when issues around sexual orientation, identity, and just letting humans be humans and just let people live their life, sometimes I get so passionate about it because it's like one of my best friends could have not been here today. And I'm sure... That's the same story for a lot of people who, like, you know someone who, because of that social, like, isolation and how they were pushed away and how they were condemned, they're not here with us today because, like, they couldn't take it anymore, unfortunately. Ay, ay, ay. There's a possibility I won't be around to see the end of this trial. Yes, I've considered that. Hmm. Provisions in my will for some charities... Miguel will need a lawyer. I know it's not your area. I know a good probate lawyer. Thank you. You're welcome. Hmm. Now, can you describe the circumstances in which you joined the firm? Why ain't Wheeler Element at Long Brown? Do you mind this music? Do you like opera? <laughs> He's not trying to answer those questions right now. I am not that familiar with opera, Andrew. Oh, this is my favorite aria. Sandria Shenye, the mob. Set fire to her house. Her and her mother died, saving her. She woke. The place that cradled me is burning. Do you hear the heartache in her voice? Hmm. Can you feel it, Joe? <laughs> now in, in come the strings, and it changes everything. I love how they're connecting. As hidden. I bring sorrow to those who love me. All that single cello. Mm. Love came to me. <laughs> said live still I 
am life. Heaven wow. is in your own. This is shot so beautifully. I don't have anything to say, honestly. Spiritual. Hey, geez, I, I'd better get out of here. Lisa's, uh, I told her that, you know. <laughs> he's connecting and he's scared of that. Uh, 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 I'll look over the, the Q&A. No, you're ready, you're ready. I understand that feeling so well. Again, I talked about like your heart and your mind being in conflict because your heart and your humanity is wanting you to connect with this other being because you see their humanity, you see their love, you see their light. But then your brain and all the things society have taught you about how to view these people or this community is telling you don't connect, stay away from them, run away from them. Those two ideologies starts to conflict and if you're lucky, your heart will shine bright and overcome those misconceptions about this person. I'm just gonna be real with y'all. Um, the last movie I watched and posted on my channel was Signs and not to get into spoilers, but I talked about how when my dad died, I questioned my faith in God as well, right? And something else that kind of pulled me away from the church as well was when I moved to the U.S. And like I was an adult and like I started encountering more people and I started encountering people of different like identities and sexual orient orientations and stuff like that. And some of the best people I've ever met and... I always hear the stories about how their religious families or the church, the hate they got from these communities in these places. And again, I was in conflict right there. I'm like, man, like I was taught that people from this community are this, that, and the third. Stay away from them. But now I'm meeting people that are some of the best people I've ever met in my life. Some people that like our bonds are so strong. And then that conflict starts. Should I follow my heart or should I follow my mind and what I've been thought about people with this kind of sexual orientation or this kind of sexual identity or, you know? And that feeling, which I represent what he went through there, like he just experienced Tom Hanks in his purest form, his happy, loving, emotional self. He saw that man as human while he was singing that opera. And that awkwardness, the salute, the wanting to leave, make an excuse of his wife is waiting for him at home. Like that awkwardness is is, is real because I feel that's a byproduct of those two ideologies clashing. Like should I connect and love on this person and understand their humanity for who they are? Or should I let the misconceptions and the big bigotry that I've learned win in this moment. So his awkwardness is a byproduct of that conflict maybe going on in his mind right now. I might be wrong, but I think about the scene, but I think that's what is going on there. That's At least that's what I felt from that scene. Because, you know, he was ready to stay there, darn near all night, figuring the questions out with him. But after that connection was made or is being made, the awkwardness came and he had to, <laughs> he had to get out. Yeah. Jesus indeed. Is he going to go back inside? And I love this because it shows he wants to 
It shows he wants to connect. This is f***ing beautiful, man. I have never seen anything like this that captures the true essence of like fighting against your preconceived notions about someone or... Yeah. But this is good. This is good. No one says that change have to be easy, but as long as you're willing and your heart is open, you can learn to love regardless of what you've been taught. He can't stop thinking about the song. I guess he's feeling the same love he has for his daughter for Tom right now, because we're only human. <laughs> I think at the end of the movie, he's going to be more like his wife. There's no better feeling, bro. Getting in bed and having someone half asleep just grab you. <laughs> someone who loves you. Ain't no feeling, boy. God, I feel this so hard, man. Oh, man, he's taking a stand. Can you describe the circumstances in which you joined the firm? Wyant Wheeler aggressively recruited me. They were aggressively. the most prestigious firm in Philadelphia, particularly Charles. What impressed you about They were so close. He was the kind of lawyer I thought I wanted to be, possessed of an encyclopedic knowledge of the law, a razor-sharp litigator. Uh, underneath an elegant surface, he has an adventurous spirit. So in the years you worked at Wine mm. Wheeler, um, you ever tell Charles Wheeler you were gay? No, I, I didn't. Anyway, mm. I did plan to tell Charles eventually, but then this... Oh, something happened at the Rocket Club uh, three three years ago. Somebody Interesting. started telling some <laughs> jokes. How does a get fake an orgasm? He throws a quart of hot yogurt on your back. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of the hairdresser. How'd that make you feel? Relieved. That I never Interesting. told him I was gay. Very wow. Relieved. Are you a good lawyer, Andrew? I'm an excellent lawyer. Period. I love the law. I know the law. I excel mm -hmm. in practicing. What do you love about the law, Andrew? Many things. I love uh, this so much. What I love the most about the law is that every now and again, not often, uh -huh. you get to be a part of justice being done. Being done. It really is quite a thrill when that happens. I feel that. And it's not being done right here, right now. You said earlier that was a beautiful line of question. Aspired to be the kind of person who had an adventurous spirit. Do you take risks? In wow. my work, yes, calculated risks. You have to. I know she's going to use this and say some bullshit. Stress that long hours and stressful working conditions might damage the immune system and speed up your illness. My doctor mentioned the impact that stress could have on the immune system. Yeah. Have you ever been to the Stallion Showcase Cinema on 21st Street? Is that a gay bar or something? I've been to that theater three times. What kind of movies do they show there? Gay movies. Wow. Gay pornographic movies? Yes. Let's see where Man, this, this is, is going. Counselor. You know where that is you, going, Judge. Have you ever had sex with anyone in that theater? That is private. What does that have to do with anything? Andy. Yes. Approximately what year did that event take place? How is this line of question irrelevant? Yes, it was uh, 480, not 84, 85. I hate this so much. It's so bullshit because they think they're getting an aha moment but you're just exposing your stupidity and your bigotry because it's like if he was in a if he was in a straight relationship with a woman and did the same thing like this wouldn't have been brought up to court if they were watching straight porn and they were watching it in a establishment that is not like a gay establishment this wouldn't be an issue again it's just them vilifying the act 
of loving of a man loving another man vilifying your sexual orientation because if that was the quote-unquote norm a man and a woman this wouldn't even be a line of questioning here so it's just it's less of a got you moment and just more of a it's just stupid man we didn't know how you could get it or that it killed you i could use some water though would you bring mr beckett some water please stay strong my guy stay strong as a homosexual one is often forced to conceal one's sexuality isn't that right yeah because of how you all rip them Some apart yes. were you living with miguel alvarez in 1984 or 85 when you had your anonymous sexual encounter in the porn theater yes yeah, screw you man could have infected mr alvarez at that time is that correct <sighs> You've testified that the lesions on your face were visible to the people that you worked with, correct? He is not there right now, man. And it's your contention that when the illusion that you had AIDS and they fired you, is that correct? Why does he have a f***ing mirror? As painful as it is, it is the only conclusion I could come to. Do you have any lesions on your face at this time? What the hell? One. Your Honor, may I approach the witness? Yes, you may. Why do this? Just to break him down further? Can you see the lesions on your face in this mirror? Answering truthfully. Well, at the time I was fired, I had four lesions and they were much bigger. Could you answer the question, please? What he's saying stands, though. Um, no, no, I, I can't, can't really see. This is so painful to watch, man, because... I hate this case. May I borrow your mirror, please? <laughs> May I borrow your mirror? Andrew, do you have any lesions on any part of your body that resemble the lesions you had on your face at the time that you were fired? Wow. Yes. To remove his shirt so that, you know, everyone here could uh, get an accurate idea of what we're talking about. Objection, what we were talking about. Your Honor, it would unfairly influence the jury. Your Honor. If Andrew they need was to know. To use a wheelchair due to his illness, would the defense ask him to park it outside because it would unfairly influence the jury? Come on, we're talking about AIDS. We're talking about lesions. That's a bar. Let's see what we're talking about. Right. I'll allow it. I think this will help their cause for sure. This whole time, I haven't talked about yes. Tom's acting. Top notch. Mm. Mm. Andrew, can you see the lesions on your chest in this mirror? Yes. What is painful about this is it's so dehumanizing, like what he's having to do, like expose himself in court. And I know somewhere deep inside these men, I know somewhere deep inside them, they know they're wrong, right? So it's that analogy I made about like your heart, your heart versus your brain. But it's like they're letting what they have learned and what society have taught them to like overpower that little part of their humanity that is telling them what they're doing is wrong. Because yeah, even their lawyer said, I hate this case because I feel like somewhere she feels like she's having to like strip this man down and like dehumanize him in order to like prove a point or win the case. So like somewhere in there, um, I think the key is just trying to reach someone before they go down that, you know, the darker side of it. Were you aware that Andrew Beckett was suffering from AIDS? Of course. No. Did you Liar. fire Andrew Beckett because he had AIDS? No, I did not fire Andrew Beckett because he had AIDS. Why you promoted Andrew Beckett to your firm? Oh my God, and he's not there right most now. Most importantly, give him opportunity after opportunity. Oh my God, he's fading well, away. You groomed someone the way we groomed Andy. You made quite an investment. Can we someone go check on him? Kick in and deliver. But uh, ultimately, we could no longer ignore the gap between reality and the promise. That's a good story. It's bullshit, but it's a good story. 
he's trying to sell right there. Mr. Wheeler, you are magnificent. For real. You are, you are my hero. Andrew is right. You are the greatest. Are you gay? Hmm. Objection. How dare you? No, I am not a homosexual. Isn't it true that when you realized Andrew Beckett, your golden boy, your future senior partner, was gay and had AIDS, it drove a stake of fear right through your heterosexual heart? Remembering <laughs> all the hugs and the handshakes, the intimate moments in the sauna, friendly pats on the backside that you and Andrew exchanged ah! like guys exchange sometime, it made you oh say, my God. my God, what does this say about me? Objection, Your Honor. This is the third time I have noticed that he's using his own personal experience with either Andrew or the gay community, like at the store, to like fire back at the law firm because the same way when that dude asked him try to pick him up at the store the same way he got mad the same way he probably felt emasculated the same way he felt offended that someone would even think that he's gay i think he's using that same experience to attack the firm and this not so nice fella sitting over here i think that's i think that's impressive it's 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 a reoccurring thing that they have done throughout the movie i like that a lot mr miller you may tap dance around me all you wish but the truth still remains telling us what he thought we needed to know about who he really was and he insisted on bending the rules and his work oh my God. someone check up on him as a result of that that someone check up on him who makes these rules that you're talking about huh read your bible mr miller old and the new right the bible rules in there andrew excuse me i can't see and Andrew's appearance over the course of the year leading up to his termination. I did. Generally, they were for the worse. Or any of the other managing partners at any time. No, no, I didn't. I didn't even give him a chance to talk about it. And I think I'm going to regret that for as wow. long as I live. Uh, they are saying that he wasn't a good lawyer, that he was mediocre. And oh, yeah, it is the jury. They gave him the most important lawsuit that they ever had for one of their most important clients. They say that that doesn't prove anything because that was just a test. That's what bullshit. Carrot? What's that, Doc? <laughs> to see if he would rise to the occasion. Okay, okay. So say I got to send a pilot. He's going to be flying a plane. It costs $350 million. Who am I going to put in that plane? Exactly, so your best pilot. You cut the grade because I want to see if you can rise to the Your challenge. best f***ing pilot. I'm going to give that assignment to my best pilot. My sharp. That's all my you need. Experience, my top gun. Very best I got. That's God, all you need right that. there. Would somebody please explain it to me? Right. Like I'm a six-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> number seven. I agree. Turn number eight. Agree. Turn number Three nine. days later. I agree. Turn number ten. I disagree. Number 11. I agree. For number 12. We can win them all. Agree. For back pay and loss of benefits, we award $143,000. For mental anguish and humiliation, we award $100,000. Punitive damages, we award $4,782,000. You may record the verdict. <laughs> yes, Everyone sir. Everyone seated until the jury is removed. How could they do that? Shut up. What do you mean, how this could they do that? This trial is now concluded. Let's go. It ain't even about the money, man, but just justice was served. Justice was served. The statement was made. Man, that was freaking brilliant. He's lost the vision in his right eye. Oh, my God. And because of the CMV, he will not regain his vision. What is CMV? I'm guessing that's a treatment, is that a drug or something. Hey, hey, where you go? Thank you. Oh man. We are so grateful to you. You were wonderful. Right, Thank you so much. Hmm. <laughs> Brought some wine for him. Hmm. <laughs> Come sit. How you doing?
What do you call a thousand lawyers? Chain together at the bottom of the ocean. I don't know. A good start. <laughs> Excellent work, Counselor. I thank you. It was great working with you. Counselor. Yeah, help him out. I better go. Nah, stay with him. Fuck. Sure thing. See you later. Thanks for stopping by. Oh, fuck. I hope he does see him again, man. And it sucks, because it had to take him experiencing someone like this and watching them die. He's a fighter. <sighs> Just want to get him home. Thank you, Joe. What do you call a thousand lawyers chained together at the bottom of the ocean? Good start. <laughs> <Very> good. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow, buddy, okay? Uh, they keep saying that, but I feel like he won't make it till tomorrow. God bless you, Andy. Good night, son. Try to get some rest, okay? I love you, Andy. Love you too, John. And the fucked up thing is that, like, these people will still see someone in this predicament. And the way they justify that to their self is, oh, he's paying for his sins. Are you stupid? <sighs> Sometimes I don't have patience, man, for, for people like that, man. See you first thing tomorrow. I think they know he's not going to make it till tomorrow. is playing in the back I just noticed his favorite song People are people, man. People are people, man. It doesn't matter what you've learned, what you've been taught about a community. If they don't worship the way you worship, if they don't love the way you love, people are fucking people, man. And they have people who love them. People are people.
if you're watching this and you have some kind of negative feeling towards people who are trans, people who are gay, people with different gender identities or all that, they're people, right? They're people. Think about the impact you want to have on those people's lives. Like I said, I don't want to feel like I'm preaching to the choir, but anyone who watched this movie, loved this movie, and is actually here on YouTube seeking out reactions to this movie, I trust where your heart is on the issues handled or talked about in this movie. Um, Tom Hanks, y'all. Um, Denzel. This film, so relevant today. Yes, it focused on AIDS, but it's what's attached to AIDS or what people attach mostly to AIDS, the misconception and still now that like from homosexuality, from this, that and the third, still relevant today. The bigotry, I feel like it's even more amplified today than it ever was with the internet and stuff like that. Like all these talking heads on Fox News or conservatives is like they don't understand how many people they've killed indirectly with how they spew hatred concerning some communities and all that. I told you, bro. Like, I'm not even talking about the movie. I don't know. I'm just saying what comes to mind. I got a call from the emergency room. One of my best friends, like, they tried to end it because life was not being fair to them. Their church was not being fair to them. Their family was not being fair to them for no other reason than they were just choosing to identify as what they see themselves and what they feel themselves as. And I'm so happy, I'm so happy that that he's still with us today, man. Um, but yeah, something I said towards the end of that movie that is so sad and heartbreaking that it had to take Tom Hanks' character dying or be near death to make his lawyer like fully, I mean, I feel like he was already there, but like fully grasp his humanity, like fighting for him, being by his side, seeing him as a person. I feel like that's the key thing there. These people are fucking people, just like you. The same way you cry when a family member pass or a friend pass. That's the same way they cry when their family or their friend pass. Even what I said earlier, the same way you're attracted to the opposite sex, like a man or a woman, why would you think it would be different for someone to that is gay to like have that same love or emotions towards someone else? You know, it's easier to hate people when we dehumanize them and don't understand them. About the movie, throughout the movie, I love how the shot was just on their faces. Very close zoom. It puts you in there, man. And I love the, man, I love the full arc that Denzel's character went on in this film. Like I said, he was always a smooth stand-up guy. Very intelligent man, very kind man, but I'm glad before the opera scene, when he said, hey, this is how we grew up in this community. Like, that is just the norm. Like, hating people, thinking they're funky, they're funny, this, that, and the third. It's like, I was glad he was self-aware of it. And um, as we go on through the movie, like, we saw that his full arc about learning how to suppress all the nonsense that we're taught in society and everything about how to feel about this community. And actually, like, be his friend and love on him. And the performance from Tom Hanks, like, come on, dog. Now I see why people say this is Tom Hanks' best acting role. It's like, come on, you could feel every emotion. You could feel him tired. You can feel him. Man, this this movie took a lot out of me. And I just want to thank you for, like, hanging through to it. And feeling as well. I just want to hear your thoughts, your comments, what you thought about everything. This, this. Thank you for watching. Everyone who's been recommending this movie for a long time finally got into it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys have a wonderful day, night, morning, evening. And remember, just lead with love. It is very important. Yes, I'm an ally. The people in these communities are my brothers, my sisters. But at the end of the day, I don't understand everything about like gender, identity, every. I barely know anything about all of it, but like... I feel like if you lead with love and empathy, you're always going to be on the right path, honestly. 
it's like you don't have to understand pronouns or how many pronouns they are you don't have to understand all that i mean i would love for you to like try if you care about this person like try to understand their life and their circumstance but like you don't have to understand everything but just don't throw stones man don't throw stones yeah there's just there's just a lot my brain need to calm down but thank you all for watching peace <laughs>